Good morning, it's Friday, May 3rd, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Joy Comes with the Morning, and our scripture is Psalm chapter 30. I will exalt you, Lord, for you rescued me. You refused to let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord my God, I cried to you for help, and you restored my health. You brought me up from the grave, O Lord. You kept me from falling into the pit of death. Sing to the Lord, all you godly ones. Praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. I've come to believe very deeply that ministry is the art of using your pain well. I've written enough about times of wake-up calls that come through pain. I'll spare you my rehearsing those details again. However, considering how often life has taught me this lesson, that our pain is for purpose, not just chance or natural selection, or to satisfy the whims of random capriciousness of some far-off God, It begs a question of how that all fits together. Does God really use pain in one person to bring healing to another? I believe strongly that the answer is yes. Further, I would call that process the very definition of ministry. The pain in one human being is the seed of healing in another. Years ago, I heard Reverend Steve Brown voice his conviction about this issue in a sermon that, quote, every time a non-believer gets cancer, a Christian gets cancer. It's so the world can see the difference faith makes. Now, I kind of believe that, at least on the level that there is, without doubt, a correlation between pain and the birth of faith. C.S. Lewis believed that. In his book, The Problem of Pain, he wrote this, God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our pains. It is his megaphone to arouse a deaf world. Because of time constraint and a five-minute devotion, I don't have space to develop a whole theological treatise about the purpose of pain. Others have done that well. So let's just run with my presumption that pain is necessary because we've chosen it. Our sinful nature prefers rebellion, and rebellion leads to the consequence of separation from God, which always brings about pain. And God is not the author of pain, but he uses what we've chosen, bad or good, to bring about his loving plans for us. Here's an illustration of how pain in one person forms a culture of ministry for the benefit of another. When a whole hive of yellow jackets decided my face was a landing strip, I got the point. Actually, about a hundred points. I was a teenager helping Dad trim some dead branches high up in the oak tree in our yard. I made a bad choice to cut the hollow branch that was home to those demons with yellow and black stripes. That choice caused me pain. A lot of pain. I lost consciousness, and my quick-thinking father rushed me to our doctor and a life-saving injection. Fast forward about five decades, and my bride, Elizabeth, and I were doing some spring cleanup in our yard, and she discovered the mean-spirited descendants of the bees that had gotten me. Well, she lost consciousness in three minutes. Normally, even when something bad happens, I'm a wait-and-see kind of guy. Not this time. 9-11 and a trip to the hospital later, my bride is still with us. I knew her need and what she was going through. I knew I had to act quickly and no time was wasted. My pain in 1960 became Elizabeth's help in 2010. For you today, the pain that you have experienced in your life is really a gift. It's God saying to you that he trusts you with that pain because somebody else will need it. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.